फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायकर Hello there and welcome to tonight's edition of Face to Face for the News for Steam. I am Jaimal Ratnayaka. Do the right thing when even when no one is looking. That is how the famous saying goes. But unfortunately, we reside in a country where those in places of power do not do the right thing even when all eyes are on them. And fraud and corruption has taken our country into an abyss to regulate all of this ensure that policy makers are kept in line and the interests of the people are maintained there are certain entities that have been established and the watchdog for the major utilities of sri lanka including the power sector is the public utilities commission of sri lanka and tonight with me i have a very special guest who was brought into the spotlight especially in the recent past over his very strong opinions against the political establishment and certain decisions made by the ministry and the minister of power and energy tonight we have with us in our studios mr janaka ratnayaka former chairman of the public utilities commission of sri lanka a very good evening to you mr ratnayaka and welcome very good on evening. the show yeah So Mr Ratnayak tell me you have been re- relieved of your duties uh, earlier this year you mm. the parliament uh, the parliament voted you out, out of yes. your yeah. chairmanship at the PUCSL how are you enjoying life these days how are you viewing the developments in Sri Lanka's uh, power and energy sector that uh, are taking place nowadays first i'll start uh, you said a nice thing that you know the watchdog mm. now watchdog has become a little puppy mm. the reason is that you know uh, during my time at pucsl mm. before they uh, put me out from uh, popular votes mm. at the parliament and mm. and this is the first time that uh, a chairman of a commission or a, a chairman of a com- uh, government entity mm. was uh, ousted mm. by uh, a voting, voting, by voting voting by uh, a resolution in parliament is a very, uh, pathetic mm. situation because now see these commissions independent commissions are created to have good and stable policies yes and they have not challenged my position as the chairman of uh, public utilities commission mm. as a commissioner and the chairman of the commission mm. they have challenged the entire policy makers right independent policy makers in this country yes they have set a president yes by and it is you. which is not bad the country needs maybe not only one commission of uh, P- like pcsl maybe mm. they, they need around 10 mm. to discipline the country and discipline the politicians to do the right thing yes. now see if you look at the recent recent developments mm. now see what has happened at uh, the health ministry yes. the secretary was taken into custody yes now now secretary is the principal uh, accounting officer of a uh, state institution state institution and when they were now see i think this is a good lesson as well for the other Uh, SLS officers and the uh, the officers in the top level in the government organizations to be mindful mm. and to do the right thing because if you do not do the right thing finally what happens is individually they have to pay mm. they have to you know get uh, interest and maybe mm. you know we do not know what what is you know coming for them yes and therefore it's good thing that at least something is happening mm. to discipline at least SLS officers because we are talking about Uh, corruption we mm. are about transparency all those things you know even the imf uh, the major concern is yes. that you know corruption, corruption vulnerabilities in sri yes, lanka yes yes, yes. yes. now see uh, from uh, top to bottom in certain entities mm. you take a place like maybe uh, uh, cmc mm. or maybe another you know council over there yes. now, every every place is corrupted mm. it's not at the top mm. it's at the ground level, level. now say you you need to get rid of corruption mm. then only we can think about at least you know some uh, rational in the development of a country certainly so when we need independent commissions mm. and the political hierarchy do not care anything mm. but they want to is you know get their uh, decisions established through these uh, boards and the commissions and the other organizations yes where finally the mm. the board members and the the people on top will fall into trouble yes so therefore 
the message that we can get it from this is mm. be serious mm. do the right thing mm. and do not bend your knees mm. and your spine to this uh, ignorant politicians yes we certainly. have seen that you know, they have come for last 75 years mm. now we are in a bankrupt state yes not because of the fault of the citizens of 25 21 million mm. because of this the politicians mm. who have come from you know generation to generation mm. keeping the power in you know particular the families and you know entities mm. and ruin this country mm. we are now see we are talking you know big today because yes. now see how many messages that we get from uh, uh, different parties you know we yes. we are very proud that we have taken mm. 787 us dollars uh, loans from three entities yes <laughs> it is something to be scary mm. of you know get scared of we light firecrackers when the imf approved <laughs> our uh, extended funds 387 million from uh, imf mm. 250 million from world bank, world bank 200 million for adb adb mm. these are not these are not uh, donations yes. they are loans mm. they are commercial loans mm. where the country is in trouble and not paying the loans mm. they are you know happy about you know getting more loans more loans getting more loans without paying loans yes and both are the same mm. now see for the last one year we did not pay and we had around 54 billion us dollars yes. now if you do not pay the uh, premium and the interest it mm. will balloon mm. now we are looking at around end of this year mm. maybe over 60 billion now the loans are getting added tax are tax are being you know imposed on people and i do not know where we head mm. without any proper direction mm. and in order to develop the country mm. loan will not help you unless you generate uh, revenues yes. certainly so you've been uh, in the puc as yes. uh, for a very long time yes. and you are privy to the inner workings of the power and energy sector in yes. sri lanka yeah. and since august 2022 yeah. the cost of electricity mm. paid by the consumer has increased by 250% mr 450% mm. 450%, 450% now yes so there was a revision in february yeah. there was another revision uh, recently yes. by uh, 66% first and then a further 18% but the pucsl and now what the ministry is saying let me backtrack yeah. the ministry is saying that uh, they have introduced a cost reflective methodology but in who has in- uh, introduced the minister says no, no, it that is the law of the country i see so we can charge only what you, uh, you your cost only you can recover mm. your utility go into the uh, act of Ele- electricity act and the pc select you mm. can recover only the cost right so, so what you are, can make profits right so, wha- so if, wha- if if minister says mm. with the cabinet blessings that they have implemented cost reflective to tariff methodology mm. is a lie because mm. that's the governing law of this damn mm. country because this is not this is not something that i am saying on yeah. the 12th of december meeting was held yeah. headed by uh, the minister of power and energy mm. and when speaking to those present at the meeting he says that uh, we introduced this cost reflective mm. methodology but mm. isn't that included in the act itself no it is it is it is the act it is mm. the law of the country because mm. in uh, electricity utility tariff you mm. can charge only what you your cost right the, the incurring cost can be charged but even then yeah. even if you were to introduce a cost reflective methodology yeah. in february yeah. the pucsl said a 35% increase would suffice yes but when the announcement came out it had been increased by 66% yes. so you know what w- happened what is the in, in february yeah. uh, our recommendations with the uh, officers of pucsl right. increased the tariff only by 35% okay because according to the uh, assumption of pucsl mm. based on the data and the calculations mm. we said that this year although people were talking about el nino and you know drought and all those things mm. we were sure about getting more than 4500 gigawatt hours from hydro generation right but CB was adamant to mm. say that we they will get only 3500. Right. We did not agree. Mm. Based on our assumption we said 35% is more than enough. Right. But what happened is when I when I'm out of the country mm. the politicians got the other members onto their side and they kept the PUCSL uh, recommendation aside mm. and they accepted the entire proposal which was given by CEB, CEB. for 65% then they just implemented using the pucsl puppet members so you were kept in the dark i was not kept in the dark i was fighting against it mm. but you know but you weren't aware because you were out of the country eh? no i was aware because mm. uh, i i forward the recommendations to the board and right. left right okay. so board has to decide mm. they have to just accept the recommendation of pucsl so there are instead three other members in the board three other members including you or no. without you there were four okay and i was out mm. majority 
will decide okay so using that technical fold mm. and they mm. use these three members mm. who are ignorant in tariff uh, revisions because two members are just appointed right one day before the tariff revision I see. and they just uh, sign it and they were forced to uh, come to the uh, presidential secretariat mm. and they were forced to sign the, the agreement revision. so this is how that you know government acted mm. to implement this uh, unsolicited mm. or unrealistic tariff hike mm. in February right and again they increased it now see you look at the bottom line of uh, bottom line of uh, CB this year right they will definitely make mm. 50 billion profits 50 billion 50 billion profits net right of 50 billion now where's the minister so-called uh, cost reflective tariff if if it is only cost cost reflective mm. how the CB can make net of 50 50 and th mind you this 50 billion is only a net mm. and if you look at the operational profits mm. before bank interest and the depreciation mm. staggering 150 billion rupees and who's paying this mm. innocent consumers yes. who will not have even three meals to eat a day now utilities is costing almost 25 percent of mm. your anyone's income now yes so how can people absorb it? It yes. is not possible. Yes, because everyone needs electricity. Even units. one or two bulbs, even the people who use between zero to yeah. thirty units, yes. they need electricity. Yes, yes. Now see how the situation has escalated. Now mm. you can see this: the disconnection, the yes. uh, disconnection. Mm. What they have done right. for this year mm. is over. Up to uh, October, mm. almost five hundred fifty thousand. And mind you that uh, November only the next revision came. Then with the increased tariff hike, mm. there will be more disconnections. So power That's supply to 544,000. Thousand up to October. Up to October. November, December will exceed more than 700,000 people. And that means 700,000 people are without power. And again what happens is when, do you, when, when they reconnect it, mm. they charge 3,000 bucks. Yes. And from this money alone they have made 2 billion rupees. Whose money is this? Now, when the people are not having money to pay electricity bill, they come and disconnect by force. Mm. Now, I heard certain things, you know, during the last one week, mm. they don't even give red notices now. Mm. There's a procedure that they should, yes. they must follow. Yes. They don't follow. They come and, you know, they use, they by yes, force, by they force. disconnect it. And reconnection mm. is, you have to pay everything. Mm. But Ever you could not pay, you have to pay 100% mm. plus 3,000 rupees. Mm. Now, this idiotic people should understand mm. when the people are not paying their electricity bill, bills, how can they pay entire the areas yes. plus another 3,000 yes. rupees? Yes. Now, this is against all the business norms and the policies mm. and the practices. And they, they disregard everything and they just disconnect. I heard but from some temples also. Mm. I think the temple of uh, my village, you know, where I live, uh, Kirlapana, right. Pura Rama, uh -huh. the head priest phoned me and said that their electricity is disconnected. Without even, you and know. This is in Colombo. This is in Colombo. Colombo alone. And this is 100 meters away from the CV <laughs> office in Kirlapana. Right. Now, see how ignorant. Mm -hmm. At least give some, maybe give, give some verbal yes. uh, notice. Mm. Give a grace this period. Is, this is a business. Mm. And this is business where government is making huge money. I think this is the entity that government is making mm. this year than any other government organization. Now, on top of that, making 50 billion rupees profit, mm. this ignorant politician are talking about uh, restructuring. When the entity is making profits, why the hell that you want to restructure? Because we speak about restructuring, underperforming SOEs. Under but this uh, entity clearly seem to be yes. making yes. billions yes. of billions profits. Of but money. There are projects of uh, where private investors seem to be coming in uh, northern Sri Lanka where they are planning on implementing a solar power project. And uh, there are talks of privatization. Yes. But I, uh, help me understand because yes. you say we pe restructuring mm. state-owned entities that are underperforming mm. is the way to go. Mm. But clearly the CEB is making a lot of wealth, a lot of net profit. Mm. But there are still talks ongoing of privatization. But why would you privatize an entity, a key entity, that is making profits? Mr. Not Rattman? a key entity. It is something to do with our national uh, security. security. Yes, and certainly. Interest. Yes. And this is connected unlike to any other industry. Mm. Now you take uh, petrol, diesel, you know, mm. only the people who have vehicles will use. Yes. But electricity is 
penetration of electricity supply is almost 100 percent and everybody from i said from embryo to mm. bed didn't mm. need electricity, electricity. Yes. because you can't just live without Cer a fan certainly so therefore people should understand the value of this you know particular utility now say if you look at water water mm. the supply is limited only to 50 percent of our population mm. but electricity is 100 percent yes therefore they should know the value of this mm. and it is not only to not only connected to the domestic uh, users mm. industries now see how many industries are uh, busted or maybe gone out of business yes, because especially of the, in the shrinking economy uh, yes shrinking economy huge uh, tariff uh, electric tariff mm. water bills mm. now how can they survive now in order to run these organizations mm. in order to run the government in order to run a, anything else mm. we need to make sure that the people will mm. have income mm. now see how can a bankrupt country can make billions of billions of money or take billions of billions of money from public mm. the people mm. and the businesses where the country is bankrupt and officially but for all the from a bankrupt nation mm. how can you make uh, trillions of money out of taxes and utility bills but for all the profits that the CEB mm. has made mm. our uh, power grid is in a very vulnerable state we saw a couple of weeks ago <laughs> Sri Lanka was in the dark for seven to eight hours yes. why hasn't why haven't these systems been updated Mr. Ratnayaka we have a long-term power generation mm. plan that is supposed to be years. developed every uh, every two years Every two years or twenty years. For I twenty this years, is the longest uh, plan that you know any government entity has. Right. Now it's a good point that you touched. Mm. Now see, uh, we had a blackout on the 9th of December. Yes. And similar blackout in uh, 2021 mm. December. Exact location, except except ex for the exact reason, mm. the same grid failed. Yes. Now see to st avoid that, mm. I issued a. A special gazette not notification mm -hmm. on the 9th of 2022. Okay. Under my signature, mm. outlining mm. or giving certain directions to mm. follow. Right. And when I just, you know, heard what, uh, you know, subject ministers were talking at the parliament, mm. they were completely unaware of this. Right. The recommendations made by PCSL mm. in order to avoid a similar occurrence. Mm. But what happened at the same location, the same, because of the same reason, mm. we had another five hours of power cut. power cut. You know the cost of that? 10 billion rupees. Who's going to pay? You think the government or the president and the ministry is going to pay? No. Mm. We are going to pay. We have the to people who do not have money to eat, mm. to get their three meals, the people who are using 30, 60, 90 units, the most vulnerable groups in the country, the categories, mm. they have to pay this 10 billion. Now, See, rec how many? We have given seven recommendations. Right. Same grid. We say that it can be a human error. Mm. Uh, improve your uh, the protection relays and the systems mm. and uh, the grid, mm. uh, the transmission. Mm. Then find a way to manage Norachola in a situation like this. Because mm. what happens is, when the entire grid is failing, mm. the Norachola power plants, which we get almost one third of our supply mm. in a, you know some in certain situations, nine hundred megawatts mm. no that pro, the, that the the plant just collapses. Mm. Mm. it breaks basically then to repair those and to probably get a another one luckily we have hydropower right now see if you look at the current composition now the power generation mm. we do around 85 percent from renewable energy right 65 percent from the major hydros mm. solar mini hydros mm. and wind wind 85 percent mm. you look at the cost cost of generating uh, one unit from hydro, mm. the direct cost is less than three rupees. You are mm -hmm. selling at what price? You are selling at 30, 40 rupees. rupees. Then, at this moment, if you look at coal, mm. it's costing per unit is less than 30. Mm. What happens is when a situation, when blackout occurs like that, mm. happens like that, you can't use the uh, Norwich Chole power plant for two, three days. Right. You have to use uh, fuel, mm. naphtha furnace, what is it, whatever available. Mm. Then you need to run the generators. generators. What is the cost? 100 rupees per unit. Who's going to pay? Mm. CB is paying CPC. Now from uh, 1st of January, mm. you have VAT also imposed mm. on uh, uh, petroleum products. Petroleum products. Mm. That means another 60, 50, 60 rupees per litre. So one unit will cost you maybe another 20 rupees more when you generate 
from the same source mm -hmm. because out of one liter you can generate mm -hmm. from uh, furnace or naphtha or diesel only four units 50 rupees or six rupees divided by four is 15 rupees who's going to pay mm -hmm. now this uh, vet they are going to impose on certain products categories mm -hmm. From 1st of uh, January, mm. will destroy further our economy and our economy will shrink. Mm. And they are looking at maybe now one more trillion to collect from the public. You don't give any money or generate any money mm. in the economy, mm. economy is shrinking. Now, say we, we saw some re uh, results of the third quarter of this year, we have, uh, have, around, we have around 1.6 percent uh, growth rate, mm. but if you look at up to uh, first six months mm. we have five percent minus yes so we are looking at around four percent minus mm. we are looking at 70 billion economy mm. coming down to maybe 65 mm. and then it will reach almost the exposure of our foreign debts mm. and this is a very catastrophic situation where the rulers do not take at least learn a lesson out of this what happened during the last two three years and without generating without you know basically depending on uh, the loans that we are talking about you can't run this economy right. the economy will collapse so we spoke about uh, many things yes. uh, primarily concerning the yeah. power and energy yes. sector so that was Janaka Ratnayaka the policy maker speaking yes. but now with everything that has transpired will we at the start of next year yeah. or in the coming months see Janaka Ratnayaka the politician coming out I am not a, a politician. Mm. I don't come even from a political uh, background or family. Mm. I am an entrepreneur mm. who had some interest in uh, politics for right. last maybe 20 years. Right. But I, I feel mm. with the current uh, bankrupt situation in the country, mm. country needs a, a good leader. Right. And people say that uh, we have seen this uh, corrupted, mm. underperforming, ignorant, uneducated politicians rule in the country since 1948 for 75 years and one party will come into power you know they will pledge many things mm. and you are talking about policies mm. we have no policies for the last uh, 75 years you look at the policy of uh, VAT mm. tax yes it has been changed 10 times for the last 10 years since 2002 yes now these ignorant politicians will never mm revive this economy mm. because they have no knowledge to do this right now see i will quote maybe one simple or one or two simple things mm. so our uh, taxes that uh, excise tax you know when you say liquor mm. you get you know almost 80 percent taxes mm. now it has come down almost by 40 percent right. why because people can't afford to buy mm local liquor mm. and instead they probably use you know illicit uh, breweries mm. which is not good for the health yes. and since the since it is not affordable they buy other things mm. it doesn't mean that you know when the price is high they will not consume yes. they will consume mm. but substandard goods substandard goods and government will lose mm. revenues mm. 50 60 billion mm. now look at uh, even the cigarettes mm. i i saw art, uh, article like they were yesterday mm. their income has come down tax mm. income from uh, cigarettes mm. by 79 billion mm. now the lost revenue from because of bad, bad and wrong policies mm. the other innocent people have to pay all those things mm. because they have no policies mm. and the, the reason is uh, that this politicians do not understand economics mm. accountancy and certain rulers do not have even common sense right I challenge them to take thousand rupees and go and buy something from the market. They are unable to do that because they are not. They have no. They, they are detached. They are detached from the, uh, the normal the normal world. life. Mm. No common sense. Since they lack common sense, they are they are they cannot take a decision. Unable to say, feel the people's pulse. Now you are talking about restructuring of CB, mm. where the CB is making 150 billion mm. operational profit. Mm. Which fool wants to privatize this? Mm. For what? So, do you believe you understand what the people want, what Sri Lanka requires? I have requires? become a successful businessman. Mm. I know how to borrow. Mm. I, know, I know how to repay. Mm. And I know how to make revenues. Mm. Now, see, what we need is a revenue-generating economy. Right. Now, do they, do these politicians, so-called politicians from ruling parties to other parties, mm. do they have a, a policy framework where how can the economy make, to make money? Mm. They do not know this. They will talk about, you know, many manifests, you know, right. we have seen for last 30, 40 years, you mm. know, how many manifestos and nice words, you know, do, mm. do, do about many things. Yes, but saw. end of the day, what happened after mm. 25 years, entire country is suffering, mm. population is half of the population without even proper meals. Mm. Now, what we need to do is we need to make 
revenues mm. then we need to find a way to at least feed these people mm. now see starving uh, population can they develop can be part of a developing country you mm. can't mm. now we are not even developing we are bankrupt mm. now see if you do not have proper meals mm. the people who are not having problems can they be part of active uh, economic mm. activities no mm. so first you need to feed people mm. find a way mm. then generate revenues mm. then you come out you know with a sustainable repayment of uh, your loans mm. empower people mm. entrust people mm. who you you develop them mm. i think people now understand unlike before mm. we have come to a, a stage where any common person should understand that unless you get a proper leader if you get another person out of the same lot mm. sooner or later you are getting into more troubles mm. so therefore they need an alternative a, alternative a non politician mm. who has shown uh, some straight uh, you know uh, he has come forward with straight forward policies straight forward policies mm. and who can probably you know shown the people and work given certain you know to, like to uh, walk the talk walk the talk so that is a must mm. so therefore i feel that in the future when people decide mm. they will unlike before mm. will not go behind the signature politicians mm. and instead they will find a a good man mm. a proven man mm. to run this economy because now unlike uh, uh, any other time in our history mm. we need to make sure that we come out from this economic problem mm. and the my program is based on paradigm shift right. paradigm shift is i think p- mm. people know about mm. you know paradigm shift is that you do uh, different things to get a better results yes because we are talking about system change we are talking about the policy changes you know those those those, those don't work now we need to have instead of one pu system we need to have maybe uh, 10 15 Entities, entities where the process. policies mm. will govern mm. not the ignorant politicians who come and go right so i ha- we have a plan mm. people unlike before understand what is needed mm. for us mm. because there's no further that we can uh, go down mm. unless we bounce back mm. so very quickly yeah, before before we uh, wrap up i must ask you you say that you have a plan you have a vision and yes. so on but yeah. when will the people get to know this plan mr atnak i have started it mm. and in time to come now what i do is i i talk to many social activities and groups mm. and many people because right. uh, we need to make sure that uh, i have the right people with me mm. because uh, not the people that who are corrupted mm. and who are into politics right. we need new blood mm. new people a fresh set of faces fresh set of papers people because without uh, a proper plan mm. a proper people mm. we can't move forward right. we perish further right and that's where it was on face to face for tonight janak ratnayak a former chairman of the public utilities commission of sri lanka embarking on a new journey thank you very much for joining me this evening thank yes. you very much for having me he has advocated for a paradigm shift and let's hope in 2024 sri lanka reaches that paradigm shift that we have so long yearned for thank you and good night